All right, guys, is the running back position gone extinct when it comes to workhorse running backs? That's what I want to talk about because the NFL draft is complete. And man, oh man, am I disgusted with the outcome. Committees every single place you see, left, right, and center. Everybody that you thought was safe, including Brees Hall, no longer safe anymore. I want to talk about it. I want to break it down here for you. On this Sunday, we're talking running backs. Is the workhorse extinct? Is it game over? I'm going to cover it here for you. I'm going to give you the answer at the end of this video and go over these committees that are absolutely making me feel completely nauseated. All right? We're talking running backs. We're talking are they extinct? Let's get to the show. All right, guys. Welcome to the show. Happy Sunday. Sundays, I like to chill back, relax, do some things off the cuff a little bit. But something I was thinking this entire weekend, especially when I was watching the draft here, was the running backs, man. I'm not seeing any more workhorses solidify their positions. I see Braylon Allen to the Jets. I see Blake Corum to the Rams. Kyron Williams was primed to be that absolute workhorse, supposed to be the absolute guy that's supposed to take over the Rams. Kyron was solidified, okay? Brees Hall also solidified. Now, what teams are doing is that I know that they're adding depth, and I know it's good for reality, but understand, guys, this is a disaster for fantasy, and it's up to me to figure it out, and you guys with the line mentality, figure out who to draft, and how big is that gap in between these guys, okay? How big is the gap between Kyron and his backup, Blake Corum? How how big is the backup between Braylon Allen and Brees Hall? Will the workhorse still thrive? Will it still be a 250 to 300 attempt type situation for some of these running backs that were slated to have a 250 to 300 workhorse uh, attempt type situation? That's what I want to cover right here, right now. And to make sure you guys' roster is optimal and that this problem is solved, to make sure that you do have the workhorses if there is any, and to make sure that you have an optimal roster and to get these guys at the right value to determine who the RB1 is. For example, Trey Benson, everyone's got him at the RB2 on the Kinshisa's sheep's rankings. I'm going to take him in all my drafts because I think the gap is bigger in the favor of Trey Benson. He is the top rookie prospect coming out. We're going to talk about this in a second. So I'm going to make sure that your roster is optimal. Make sure you guys draft the right person and not follow the Kinsheepses because if you follow the sheep, guys, everyone told you last year Pollard round one. I'm like, Pollard is not good. He's not a good running back. He's not worthy of being a first round pick. And sure enough, they all told you that, and look where he ended up. Eckler, I told you he was declining. Look where he ended up, okay? So to make sure your roster is optimal, grab 16 rounds. I've linked it below. Use code SMASH to save. And also combo it with the Fantasy Sports Summit. We get to come hang out with Trey Benson, Kyron Williams, and to get to see them live and have a chance to ask them questions. You're also entered for a PS5 giveaway to the Sports Summit. So grab your ticket to the Summit below. Get 16 rounds. You'll be light years ahead of the competition, the ultimate fantasy experience, okay? Let's dive into this. Let's talk about these committees, okay? We got James Conner and Trey Benson. We got just a couple committees I'm going to run through you here. Audric Esteem goes to Denver with Javante Williams. We got Josh Jacobs. They bring in Marshawn Lloyd. That gap looks a little bit bigger there. Kyron Williams, you got Blake Corm, you got Odd Chain, they bring in Jalen Wright, Brees Hall, they bring in Braylon Allen. Dude, CMC, they bring in Isaac Garendo. And uh, you got other committees everywhere, including like Pollard and Spears. It's an absolute disaster. And again, I'm going to tell you all the answers in 16 rounds, who I'm drafting, when I'm going to draft them, and what to do to make sure you don't fall into a pit where it's a complete 50-50 split or one running back takes over and you overpaid for the other one. But real quickly here, the ones that really upset me, and I'm going to answer the question here, is the running back position going extinct? Because I think we're moving that way. The big ones that kind of concern me is Blake Corum and Kyron. Now, Kyron was not a, an early round pick. He was like round five or undrafted. He kind of came out of nowhere. So I don't think that the Rams felt warm and fuzzy with him. So they brought in Blake Corum, top rookie running back prospect out of Michigan. And I thought he'd end up on the Chargers. And now there is a problem there. And I think Blake is actually going to eat. I don't think the gap is going to be massive between Kyron and Blake. I really think Kyron's going to be the starter, but I think it's going to be like a 60 40. I think they really having a drink here, uh, a pre workout here. One sec. I really think that the, the gap here is going to be not as big as we think here, honestly. I think that Blake Corm is going to eat. And the problem with this is that Kyron is super expensive. Now, you look at another situation where, again, this is initial analysis here. When you look at a guy like Brees Hall, 
I think that the gap there is pretty massive in regards to Brees being the workhorse. But here's the thing. Braylon Allen, waste of talent, could have started on any single team. And that's where I would get really, really upset about this and pissed off is because Brees is a workhorse. He, he has that big gap, right? He's the workhorse. The problem is Braille now is good enough to be a starter. So that gap between these two guys, the, it gets a little tighter and, and, and Breland's, Breland Allen is going to eat. He's going to get some volume. How much is the question? Now, I feel more comfortable still drafting Brees Hall round one over a guy like Kyron where I think the gap is smaller. Does this make sense? So what I'm trying to explain here that no one else talks about is more practical advice. How big is the gap between these two guys, right? Like, for example, let's go to James Conner and Trey Benson. Now, on paper, because Conner was the number one guy last year, they're all kind of discounting Trey Benson, saying, well, Conner's the one, so the ADP is higher for James Conner. So I'm like, dude, the gap is massive that Trey Benson's actually a lot better than James Conner. James Conner's going to be 29 years old by the season starts. Trey Benson's young, dynamic, hungry, and he's the, you know, they drafted him in the third round. They got him for a steal. He should be a first or second round pick, but because running backs are so devalued in drafts, people are able to get him at a bargain. So I look at that scenario and I'm like, okay, I'm all over Trey Benson. So you guys see what I'm thinking here? So let's answer the question here. I want to just kind of summarize it. Is the running back position going extinct? Are running backs the workhorse? Are they trying to get away from that? Absolutely, they are. But we have to adapt. And how we do that is finding out how big that gap is. So I'll give you a quick example here. San Fran and Isaac Garando, right? Isaac did had a great run, 40-yard uh, dash. He looked good at the combine. But the gap right now, the way that it sits, CMC is still solidified in his position as the running back. The gap is massive. But one other factor you got to consider is injuries. And I tell you right now, Christian McCaffrey is due for one. So when you look at the situation, dude, I'm like, you got to look for who the potential RB1 is going to be. And I'm looking at Isaac. I'm like, dude, as soon as CMC goes down, and he will this year because he's due. He's had like almost like two or three perfect seasons, two perfect seasons, near, near perfect. Isaac can really, really shine and be that guy. So again, Isaac in a great situation as a later round steal. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm not saying make him your RB1, but you get that guy for value. Okay, so again, in 60 rounds, I'm going to lay it out. Which running backs to get, when to get them, who's going to emerge, how big the gaps are, you're going to know. Another situation, let's talk about Tony Pollard and Paul, and, uh, and Spears. I was actually excited when they brought in Pollard, while everyone else was like, no, Paul's a starter, he's taking away the job from Spears. Spears was brought in to be the workhorse running back there. He was the one that was, you know, built built and brought in and drafted to replace Derrick Henry. They bring in Pollard, who's a failed RB1, who was always a backup to a, a washed-up Zeke Elliott, couldn't even beat him. They bring him in. I'm like, dude, I'm excited. I'm glad they didn't bring in Josh Jacobs, who's more capable, or Saquon Barkley, okay? So Spears now is in a great position where they didn't draft another guy that's going to be, you know, <coughs> going to be the guy that's going to take away the volume. So Spears in a great position as well, okay? He's also going to be at the Fantasy Sports Summit. I, I, I handpicked these guys for a reason. Trey Benson, Spears. Rashid Shahid also came out of the draft really well, looking at as a solid wide receiver too. He's going to be at the, at the uh, Fantasy Sports Summit as well. You get the tickets below. So again, let's summarize this. Am I upset? Yes. I'm not liking the way that it's moving. I don't like the way that the, the, the trend is going right now uh, with these running backs, okay? I don't like what the NFL is doing. They're going RB by committee. Another drink there. And they're doing it selfishly. They're doing it selfishly in the sense that Braylon Allen can be an RB1. He can be an RB1 on any team. Now he's stuck behind Breeze, and he's going to get some work, but not as much as he could, okay? Another guy here, Kyron Williams, Blake Quorum. Kyron is fully capable. He's showed his share of injuries. He's, you know, he's shown he could be injured. They brought in Blake Corm for a strong insurance policy, whereas Blake could be a starter on any team. And there's also disasters on many teams. There's disasters on, you know, the, the Bengals right now. There's disasters on the Chargers. Like, do you really trust J.K. Dobbins and Gus Bus? Like, I'm staying away from that committee. Like, they don't even know who the RB1 is. And the Dallas Cowboys are the craziest. They don't even have an RB1. They got Rico Dowell and Royce Freeman, and they're entertaining Zeke Elliott. So I'm telling you guys, it's an absolute disaster at running back. And it's my job to, you know, to figure this out, lay it out, do the work, roll up my sleeves, and figure out who's going to get the volume, who's more talented than who. And I'm going to lay it out in 16 rounds. Grab it below, use code SMASH to save, okay? So... 
What do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think. Are you happy with the way that it's going with running backs? How do you adapt to it? But I will tell you this for all those people that are going zero, saying zero RB. Let's talk about zero RB versus your robust RB. I still think you need those running backs relatively early and making sure that they're the right ones because there's a ton of depth at wide receiver. So much so that some of these guys that are coming off early, these wide receiver ones, the Tyreek Hills, Devontae Adams, who doesn't have a quarterback, they're going to be fading off. And these other guys, the Keon Coleman's of the world, are going to be emerging. I mean, the Bills just drafted a rookie wide receiver, Coleman, who is going to be primed. What's his ADP at? I can get him for value. I like him more than Devontae Adams, okay? So you got to be able to look, adapt, aim high in the depth chart, and figure out who's who, and it's going to be a lot of fun, okay? So, running back extinct, they're trying to do it. But I still think guys like Brees Hall are still going to you know, thrive. And there's other guys like Josh Jacobs. They brought in Marshawn Lloyd there. I still think Jacobs is going to be the workhorse bell cow there. Uh, but yeah, I'm seeing it more and more and more that they are going by this uh, you know, running back by committee. It's very gross. Like the, the Lions are doing it now with Gibbs, who can be a workhorse on his own and absolutely, absolutely crush it. They're going in that direction, but it's up to you guys to find the Trey Bensons that'll emerge on top of those running backs and find out who the one is in that committee and who the guy that's going to get the most volume and the guy that's most talented. And I'm going to help you guys do that. Not only on this channel, turn on the bell, subscribe if you're the channel, but also in 16 rounds. Okay. Grab your ticket to the summit. 16 rounds. I've linked it below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm just doing an off the cuff chill video and I'm just going to do these videos where I'm just laying out my thoughts because again, I was just really, really ticked off with what I saw with these committees. So I wanted to share that with you guys, okay? Running back, extinct, they're working it, but hopefully we can revive it and find those hidden gems. I'm gonna help you guys do that on this channel in a 16 round draft session. Have a great Sunday, guys. I appreciate you. We'll talk soon. Have a good day.